You know, it's a curious thing. I actually remember life before the internet. I remember when I got a job and I got business cards that didn't have email. But I can't imagine, honestly, I can't imagine not having it now. And that's why I am worried and delighted to be joined now by Michael Connolly. He's a lawyer, U.S. Army veteran, and he's a project director with the United States Justice Foundation in Washington. And he's here to talk about the fact that the United Nations seems to be trying to take over the Internet. So, and the first question I want to ask you is, what is that the U.N. is trying to do that we should be worried about? Well, there's going to be a meeting in Dubai in December of all the member nations of the United Nations. And basically what they're doing is they're supposedly going to be updating a treaty that was signed years and years ago, a telecommunications treaty, which basically allowed for phone lines to, to run under the sea and, and be under uh, control, international control. They're going to update that to put the Internet in there, and at the insistence of China and Russia, they're going to try to control, they plan on controlling the, the Internet completely. They're going to control the content of the Internet. They're going to control who has access to the Internet. They're going to license, have people required to have licenses to be Internet providers. And they're also going to tax people for using the Internet. And they're going to take that tax money, and it's not going to go to nations like Canada or the United States. It's going to go to third world countries that they deem need more Internet access. So basically we have a situation where our content of our Internet is going to be controlled by an international agency, and they're trying to update this treaty. This is one thing that Obama wants them to do, because he thinks if they just update an existing treaty, he will not have to go to the United States Senate for ratification which is not true. The Constitution specifically provides that any treaty has to be ratified by the United States Senate. But Obama's all for this because he didn't get the kill switch he wanted over the Internet in Congress. There were two bills in the U.S. Congress, and both of them were withdrawn because it was such an outcry. So that's basically what the United Nations is going to do. And we're looking at, in Canada and the United States, having our Internet controlled by the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, uh, who knows. Okay, let's take a step back here, because I want to say, okay, who, if anybody, runs the Internet now? What, what's the top governing body, and how does it control or not control things? Well, the, basically, the top governing body of the Internet, and there, there really is no top governing body. The Internet is controlled by a number of different uh, uh, agencies, and uh, they're mostly private. Uh, countries like China try to limit the Internet. Uh, they, for example, have told Google... You can't do certain things in China, but it's basically groups like Google and the search engines and internet major internet broadband providers uh, that set the terms of the internet. And they really don't control the content. It's wide open. Uh, there is no governing body that says you can't have this on the internet. There are laws against things like child pornography, but uh, there is no existing government body or governing body that really controls the entire internet. It's a hodgepodge of various groups around the world uh, who are internet providers and uh, you know, search engines and this sort of thing. But there is an agency that, that gives out domains. Uh, these are the people I'd be most worried about if, if that got into the hands of, say, of, of the Organization of the Islamic Conference, because they might simply refuse to hand out uh, IP addresses if they didn't like you. Who's that now? Well, right now, the uh, uh, Again, there is no real control. It's different companies that offer the domain names, and they have a, a central body uh, that allows people to get domain names if the domain names have not already been taken. And uh, it, it's a private, privately operated. Uh, it has nothing to do with any government agency. And, again, if the U.N. takes control of it, that's exactly what they'll be doing. They'll be refusing to give IP addresses to people that they don't want to have them. And that would be people like me and my uh, blog and everything that I do on the Internet and my talk radio show that I do on the Internet. They just say, okay, you don't have a domain name anymore. We're taking you off the list. You can't operate. Okay. And the, the thing, because the Internet is famously decentralized and kind of Wild Westish, why couldn't Americans continue to have the Internet they're used to if the Russians and Chinese were sitting over in Moscow and Beijing saying, arg, arg, arg? How, how legally could they stop Americans from having the kind of access they have today, or Canadians? Well, they would have to have the cooperation of our government. 
And unfortunately, the President of the United States liked it, likes this treaty. He likes the idea of having control of the Internet. So if he cooperates with the international agency, uh, then he will you know, be able to curtail the Internet in this country the same way the Chinese could curtail it in their country and the Iranians do. They basically control the, the IP providers. Uh, so you can't have domain names. You can't talk about this type of thing on the Internet. Search engines, you can't have this. Uh, information that people can find on the internet. If we have the, you know, the President of the United States cooperating, then the United States will be under the terms of this treaty. Now, if this were to happen, wouldn't there be such an outcry in three days that Congress would have to legislate a stop to it? I mean, if banks and academics and bloggers and everybody in the United States suddenly found the UN yanking plugs on them, wouldn't wouldn't this just be an uproar that would be un, unendurable? Well, we've already had the uproar, and that's why the two bills were pulled out of Congress. But again, we have a president of the United States who has shown his willingness to violate the Constitution and to bypass Congress and do things on his own. And if he does, does that, I don't know if we get the votes in Congress in the House. Yes, we would. In the U.S. Senate, I don't know what would happen. I don't know if they would try to override the president. And if they did override the president, if he would just ignore it. And, you know, we have a loose cannon right now uh, in the White House in this country. And he seems very willing to cooperate more with international uh, agencies like the United Nations and to cooperate with foreign countries like Russia, that he seems to be able to cooperate with our own country, and that's you know, the Congress and even the courts. Now, we do have a Supreme Court decision that's very important for people to remember. In 1957, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that any treaty, international treaty, even if signed by the president and ratified by the U.S. Senate, could not supersede the Constitution. And we're talking about U.S. constitutional rights here. Our freedom to use the Internet is protected by the First Amendment. It's part of freedom of speech and freedom of the press. So that would be the big problem, I see, for the president. And the United States Justice Foundation, which people can, can go and see, uh, usjf.net, we would be in the forefront of lawsuits against this treaty. Okay, I, cer I certainly hope so. And my bet, my money's on the U.S. Constitution over the, uh, over the United Nations. Michael Connolly, thanks very much for joining us to talk about this latest example of international overreach.